Howdy and hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of the Rolling Stock of California. In this series, I'll be looking at the various kinds of rolling stock used in my home state of California. In this 7th episode, I'll be looking at the history and use of the Siemens Charger and the EMD F125 locomotives. So let's get started. Our story starts in the early 2010s. Locomotives used on Amtrak state-supported services and commuter rails in the state of California were beginning to show their age with the extra point of these locomotives being tier 2 and below rankings for the Environmental Protection Agency. So the state of California decided to kill two birds with one stone, promising incentives for any railroad who bought new locomotives that also met the EPA's most stringent tier 4 emission standards. The first operators to jump on this opportunity were the Amtrak State Supported Services and Southern California Commuter Rail Metrolink. The Amtrak State Supported Services, funded by the California Department of Transportation or Caltrans, teamed up with the state of Illinois and Missouri for new Tier 4 locomotives. The three looked at various manufacturers, however Siemens was the manufacturer they decided on for one reason or another. Siemens offered a modern Tier 4 locomotive with a top speed of 125 miles per hour that was able to be run and maintained on the Amtrak State Supported Services. The initial order of chargers was placed in 2014 and an initial 22 were ordered for the state of California. Commuter Rail Metrolink was taking a different approach. Metrolink has a long history with the manufacturer EMD who made all of their locomotives up to that point. Because of this, Metrolink went back to EMD to see if they could make a tier 4 locomotive just like the one Siemens was working on. EMD offered a locomotive that was modern, could meet tier 4 emission standards, and could reach a top speed of 125 miles per hour. The initial order of these locomotives was placed in 2013, about a year before the Siemens order. In early 2016, the new locomotives from both manufacturers began to arrive with the new locomotives from Siemens being the first to be shown off. A new, European-style locomotive dubbed a Charger, with the specific model name being an SC44. Soon afterwards, the locomotive from EMD was shown off, a new, modern, European-based locomotive dubbed a Spirit, the specific model name being an F125. Both of these locomotives met the EPA's Tier 4 emission standards along with various other modern amenities. Testing of these locomotives commenced soon after with the Spirit being seen on Metrolink and the Charger being used on all the state-supported Amtrak services, Pacific Surfliner, San Joaquin's, and the Capital Corridor. The Spirit began on Metrolink on June 10, 2017, while Charger service began on San Joaquin's and Capital Corridor in mid-2018 and late 2018 for Pacific Surfliner. The Siemens SC44 Charger was entered into service in California from 2018 to the modern day. It has a top speed of 125 miles per hour, a power output of 4400 horsepower, a length of 71 feet and a height of 14 feet, with a weight of 260,000 pounds. The Charger uses a Cummins QSK95 V16 diesel engine. The EMD F-125 was entered into service in California from 2017 to 2021. It has a top speed of 125 miles per hour, a max power output of 4,560 horsepower, a length of 69 feet and a height of 14 feet, with a weight of 285,000 pounds. The Spirit uses a Caterpillar C-175-20 V20 diesel engine. To make this video easier to write, I'm going to first go over the Chargers' lives in California, then go back and do the F-125s. Once the Chargers began service in California in 2018, they had a slew of issues ranging from major to minor. The most major issue, well, more of a quirk, was regarding how the engines would react to a major fault. When the engine or any other major system would experience a fault, the entire engine would shut itself down, leaving the entire train without any form of power. Past this, issues with general build quality led to various issues. Two incidents in particular come to mind. One with locomotive 2110 on train 794 one night near Gaviota, and the other with 2111 on train 572 near San Juan Capistrano. 2110 had a coolant leak dripping onto a circuit box which caused the entire locomotive to shut off, requiring the train to be rescued and pulled back to Santa Barbara. 2111 had a software malfunction that shut the engine off despite there being no actual issue, leading to train 777 having to rescue it. But 
When coupled to 572, 2111 shut off the power to 777's locomotive, leading to the crews having to troubleshoot how to stop 2111 from hijacking control of 777. This issue is naturally horrible for passengers as without power, all lighting, climate control, and other systems are completely unavailable until power is restored. This has meant that the Chargers have gained a bit of a reputation for being problem childs with only a select few on Amtrak state supported services being anywhere close to reliable. Despite these issues, two commuter rails in California tried their hands at the Charger, that being Coaster and Ace. These two placed their orders at around the same time, with Coaster getting an initial 5 and Ace getting an initial 4, with both orders arriving in around 2020. While both operators did have some minor teething issues, both operators' locomotives have been operationally okay, with only a select few problems. This performance was enough for Coaster to order and receive another four chargers in 2023 and Ace to receive another two in 2025 for service expansions. Caltrans also got two more chargers for the Northern California services in 2021. In 2025, the chargers have been extremely polarizing in terms of operations. For commuter operators, they have shown little to no issues and live up to the EMD and GE locomotives they replaced. However, for Caltrans, they have been anything but, with it getting to the point where Caltrans felt the need to quote-unquote blacklist Siemens and Cummins, which has led to a slew of issues for getting parts and repairs for the locomotives with the most issues. Once the F-125- uh, Ow. Who the hell are you? I said out. You ain't from the Metrolink area, you don't get to talk about the F-125s. How did you find my ha- Ah, uh, Jesus. Is this thing on? <clears throat> Sorry about that. Hey, name Scamtrack, MJ, whatever. I go by a bunch of different names. And I'm taking over this segment of the episode because Matt is not qualified to talk about the F-125. So, anyways, <clears throat> let's get this section going. In 2016, Metrolink showed off its new locomotive at a special event in Union Station. And then a year later, it would enter into its first mainline run on June 10th, 2017. Unfortunately, that's when the issues would start. Originally, as it was stated in 2017, Medgelink would receive the bulk order of the original 10 and additional 10, making 20 F-125s in that year. Bugs would start to appear and the delivery would start to become delayed until 2022. And in that time between 2017 and 2022, Metrolink will order an additional 20 more, making the grand total of F-125s to 40. In 2018, Metrolink put out a statement that they only had 5, yes you heard that right, 5, of the initial 20 order of locomotives. Problems with the new computers, integration into the system, which I have no clue how you can mess that up, and fuel consumption issues. These issues would unfortunately cause Metrolink to cancel trains in August of 2022, where they had to pull out 19 of its new locomotives from service due to fuel issues. To help the cancel trains, they had to bring back the refurbed F89 PHRs into service, and as of 2025, Metrolink is still using the PHRs, as some of the F125s still haven't come back and some are rotting at CMF. Oh, and also not to mention that they sometimes die in the heat, which, you know, makes no sense because they were specifically built for Metrolink, so I don't know how the how do you mess that up. Even though the F-125s have their issues, they are proving to be mm, a more reliable locomotive than the Chargers. Most of Metrolink's trains that you hear delayed are with an MP36 or striking a pedestrian or striking a car. But mostly the MP36 because they've been proving to not be that well because the engine just keeps shutting off and not working properly. And, I mean, that that's honestly about it. I mean, they tend to spew more smoke than the PHRs and MP36s, but as for reliability-wise, they seem to be doing as good as the PHR, or even better. They get up to speed quicker, and they're just a tiny bit quieter, and it seems that the crews prefer them over the chargers for comfortability and operating. While the F-125s are new, they are approaching 10 years of operating service. And there has been some talks and some documents about what Metrolink wants to do with the F-125s. In a document for a fiscal year report stretching from 2020 to 2040, it says that sometime in 2027 the F-125s will go in for a refurb, and that later down the line we could see some more F-125s or a replacement for a zero emissions locomotive. 
which will probably be some hydrogen bullshit anyways. But besides that, these locomotives are operating as Metrolink intended them to operate and are doing just a good job at it. Besides some technical issues in the early years, they are doing just fine pushing and pulling commuter trains all over the Los Angeles metro area and beyond, like San Bernardino, Ventura, and I don't know why, Palmdale. I guess that makes any- Okay, now that you're done, can you get out of my house? Uh... In the modern day, the Charger and the F-125 are still seeing service on their respective services across California with okay results overall. And hopefully, once the Amtrak Chargers undergo their midlife refurbs in the coming years, some of the more major kinks will finally be worked out, finally leaving the state of California with a fleet of modern new locomotives ready to take on the influx of demand for rail. Thanks for watching the seventh episode of The Rolling Stock of California. Be sure to go check out Scamtrak's channel and stay tuned for the next episode where I'll cover the Siemens De Zero and the Stadler Flirt. So, I was 5008 Creations, you were the viewer, now I'll see you in the future, goodbye.